Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, I hope everyone enjoy your lunch. So uh, I'm Lee. You can also call me Ka Seng. Um, some of you might recognize me from my blog, Swift Senpai. So today, I'll be discussing this crucial topic, the Swift Actor Pitfall. So if you have been working with Swift for quite some time, most likely you have come across actors. So if you are not familiar, let me give you a quick definition. Actors are reference type, similar to classes. But what makes it different from classes is that it's only allowed one task to access its mutable state at one time. So as we all know, data risks happen when multiple tasks try to access the same mutable state at the same time. So when, this means that when using actors, we can effectively prevent data risks from happening. Now, since we can use actors to prevent data rays, does that make actors threat safe? Unfortunately, the answer is no. And the reason is all because of actor reentrancy. So, what exactly is actor reentrancy? And how does it differ from data rays? To answer all these questions, let's do a quick comparison between data races and actor reentrancy. Let's say we have a dummy class with a variable x and a change function that access the value of x. So, as we all know, classes are not thread safe. So in this diagram, you can see that when two tasks try to call change at the same time, Data race occurs because both tasks are trying to access the value of x at the same time. Now, let's make our dummy class an actors. In a similar situation where two tasks try to call change at the same time, okay, you can see that task one will execute first and task 2 will await for task 1 to finish. And when task 1 finished and exceeded the change function, task 2 will proceed. This mechanism essentially prevented both tasks to access the value of x at the same time. So this is how actors prevent data races. Now, let's make things a little bit more complicated by adding an asynchronous call within the change function. So doing so essentially added a suspension point within the change function. Now, what will happen when two tasks try to call change at the same time? Looking at the diagram, where the pink dotted line represents the suspension point, you can see that task one you enter the change function, hit the suspension point, and get suspended. And when task 1 gets suspended, task 2 will enter the change function. This kind of situation where task 2 is entering the change function before task 1 exceeded is what we refer to as reentrancy. And if you take a closer look at the diagram, you notice that the access to x is always sequential, both before and after the suspension point. This shows us that even though reentrancy occurs, the actor is still doing what it's supposed to do, which is preventing data races. Okay, now that you have understand what actor reentrancy is, let me show you the trading issue it may bring. Consider this bank account actors with a balance variable and a withdraw function. Within the withdraw function, we first check for the balance and then authorize the transaction. After that, deduct the balance. 
notice that the authorized transaction function is an asynchronous function, which makes it a suspension point within the withdrawal function. Now, let's zoom in and focus on this withdrawal function. Let's say we have two withdrawal requests happening at the same time. The first one for $800 and the second one for $500. With an account balance of $1,000, we will expect the first transaction to go through while the second one will get rejected due to insufficient balance. But that's not the case. Here's what really happened. Task one that withdraw $800 will execute first, check the balance, and then proceed to authorize the transaction because balance is sufficient. And at this stage, due to re-entrancy, task two will enter the withdrawal function and perform its own balance check. And since the balance is still $1,000 at this stage, task two will also proceed and authorize the transaction. Now, after task one get authorized, it will proceed and deduct $800 from the account, followed by task two deducting $500 from the account, resulting in a negative account balance. And clearly, this is not what we want. So what went wrong? The root cause lies in the presence of a suspension point, causing re-entrancy. Task 2 is performing the balance check before Task 1 completed the entire transaction. This allowed Task 2 to get past the balance check even though the balance is not sufficient. This particular sequence is what leads to the undesirable negative balance outcome. So, how can we identify a potential reentrancy issue? First, check for a suspension point. Reentrancy issue only happens when there is a suspension point. Once identified, ensure no mutable state access before and after the suspension point. If it is, most likely there is a reentrancy issue in the actors. So, how can we design actors to handle reentrancy effectively? One approach we can use is to always access mutable state synchronously. No reading or writing across suspension point. So for our bank account example just now, what we can do is to authorize the transaction before checking the balance to ensure synchronous access to the mutable state, which is the balance. But in some cases, that might not be possible. So in this kind of situation, what we can do is to recheck the actor state after a suspension point. This is to make sure nothing changes or the task was suspended. So for our, for our example, all we need to do is to recheck the account balance after authorizing the transaction. So to recap, Actors are not threat safe. It prevents data races, but it does not protect against trading issue caused by reentrancy. You can check for reentrancy by finding suspension point and checking mutable state access across suspension point. And always design for reentrancy. To handle reentrancy, access mutable state synchronously. If that's not possible, we check the actor state after a suspension point. You can find out more about actor reentrancy using this article. Thank you very much.